What is going on, Alpha Hunters? Markets are doing pretty good and pretty wonderful this hump day Wednesday. Not so much wonderful yesterday. <laughs> kind of a turbulent Tuesday yesterday. Yeah, yesterday um, on the live stream, you know, even when I got off, I, I was kind of expecting a little bit of a rollover and then a bounce off of that. Or at least a kind of not, not as much bearishness as we saw kind of start the day, but... <clears throat> Not totally shocked as we kind of just continue to slowly melt away on the market. And this was a this was kind of that very important level. Uh, really, it was kind of more important on the queues, but uh, breaking that kind of early morning low or the first, I guess, hour and a half of the day trading day low um, was going to be kind of important because that's where the queues were going to be sitting on like a gap fill. And after that, it was going to be basically a move down to the 100 moving average on the queues. So once we got through that level, really on the queues, you see that we just kind of gained steam and it just kind of continues to sell off. But we're seeing some pretty good price action today as far as the bullishness goes, currently up about a third on the SPY. A little bit of a gap down, but it's been trading higher. We did get jolts this morning. And let's see, what did that jolts come in at? Well. Pretty, pretty bad, actually. It came in at 7.67 million. Prior was 7.9 million. And the forecast was expecting an increase to 8.1 million. So, yeah. Forecasters really missed that one. And they missed it by pretty, pretty wide margin there. That's a, that's a pretty big miss. So, jolts data, not good today. The Qs, yeah, so this is kind of what I was talking about. You know, we just kind of were just barely hanging on. I think that level that really you were kind of wanting to watch was 465.11 or so, which is about right there. And it was just below that first hour and a half low. So we kind of got down to there. We kind of wicked down to there. We tried to bounce, but we never got back above some of these trending highs from the previous hour of the trading day. And it just kind of kept fading down. And it's like after you kind of keep doing that for about an hour or so, hour and a half, it's like, yeah, it's eventually you just kind of like, yeah, you know what? It, it just doesn't smell right, you know? So, um, yeah, it just kind of rolled over, just kind of came down. There you go. Uh, looking pretty pretty good today. IWM is actually up 0.9%. Qs are up 0.4%. So the IWM doing pretty well today. Okay. There you go. DIA. Very sideways. Middle party yesterday. Oh, geez. All right. Very sideways. Uh, currently up about half a percent. RSP is up a little bit more than one third of a percent. Trading higher. All right. Uh, RSP on the sell-off yesterday actually pulled into that 10 EMA. That's where it's trying to bounce from today. Okay. DIA bouncing pretty good off of a nice little pullback yesterday. Let's see if it closes above that 10 EMA today since it closed below it yesterday. Okay. IWM bouncing off that 50 EMA that it hit today, this morning. Q's. I'm gonna turn on the long terms here because this is where we kind of came into the Q's yesterday. I know we gapped down a little bit today. The Q's came down to that that 100, and that was kind of be basically that next spot. You know, if we got through this gap fill at like 465.11, which we did, you know, we we're probably just gonna make a run down to that level. Kind of thought it might happen today if we didn't get through that level yesterday, but we want to just get getting right through that level by midday and selling off in the afternoon. So I think we'll probably get one more bounce on the market. After that, I'm, I'm probably gonna really take a look at <laughs> some things. But here's a take a look at the SPY. Trading higher from a gap down. All right, that's about how things are going today. VIX, nice little gap up today, coming back down. Not much else to say. Uh, nice, nice pop there yesterday on the VIX. Uh, I was, I mean, we were definitely shocked how much we dropped off on the VIX in the first half 
of August because, I mean, we went from 17 to start August up to mid-60s within like three days, and then we dropped all the way back down to below 17, all the way back down to below 15 um, there by mid-August. So, yeah, it's been, uh, August is kind of, first half of August is kind of crazy there on the VIX. DXY trying to roll over. Okay. DXY not continuing to push higher. All right. All right. Take a look at that tomorrow. G <coughs> GLD. Um, bouncing a little bit. Nice little lower wick coming in yesterday. All right. Not really doing too much. Still just kind of sideways. Kind of consolidating here. All right. Yields pushing lower. They had a pretty good drop off yesterday. Yields continuing to drop off a little bit today. Obviously dropped off pretty good amount from that uh, jolts data but other than that there you go and we got some yield curve inversion about to uninvert looking pretty good does it do it by the end of the week and do we hold friday i guess over uh the uninversion metric do we uninvert and hold that for friday that would be that's going to be a big one if if we can hold an uninverted yield curve on Friday's close. Anyways, HYG uh, bounced a little bit today. Yep, got hit pretty good yesterday. All right, LQD bouncing pretty good today as well. Nice little pullback flag pattern looking over the past week. Looks somewhat decent. TLT trying to bounce here. Doesn't look horrible. Okay. All right, and as far as taking a look at sector rotation throughout the day, for the day, energies, lower end of the day, as well as healthcare, materials, staples, and industrials. Real estate's kind of in line with the market there. Financials, discretionaries, tech, communications, and utilities all at the higher end of the day. You can really see tech, kind of that lower open there. So I imagine intraday tech's me doing pretty good. There you see it. Tech is doing pretty good. Uh, intraday communications outperforming pretty good, as well as discretionaries also. Underperformers: real estate, industrials, financials, utilities, healthcare, staples, m materials, and energies. Okay. So yeah, we're seeing pretty good flow back into the tech area right now. Uh, take a look at crude oil. Crude oil has had some pretty good breakdowns here over the past couple of trading days. And Friday, Monday, or Friday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you're probably looking for, I mean, we're, we're basically sitting right on top of this little pivot level that we had around, yeah, 69.4 back around the beginning of January. I mean, if that doesn't hold, which I don't think it will, not for how much the past three days look horrible. You're probably looking for a move down to around 68 or a little bit under 68 for now. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. There's a lot more support there at just under 68 for crude oil. As far as gasoline, yeah, gasoline breaking down. Oh my gosh, breaking down 2023 lows. Man, that's that ain't good. You're probably looking for a move down to probably like 1.9. Or so this these levels from back in uh, 2021 heating oil Ugh. yeah it looks looks kind of bad <laughs> it has not broken this low down from 2023 but <laughs> it did still it's still just man the past year and a half just does not look great <laughs> so yeah I mean, you could definitely be contrarian and trying to be bullish at this level on heating oil but man that just does not look great so yeah definitely continue to see weakness out there in the energy markets 